That'll teach them not to keep us posted. I, I assume yeah. that it's been two minutes, so shall we start? Yeah, it probably has. All right, hello. This is the, the this is the Equestria Daily Panel. Uh, we have a collection of blog ponies and pre-readers and editorialists, and we'll start with, I think I'm moderating, so we'll start and go down the line. Hey, uh, Noble Cause. Uh, it, it's not on, I don't Ooh. think. Use that one. <laughs> You're professional. <laughs> <laughs> ah, close enough. Uh, noble cause, pre-reader. Hi. <laughs> what have you written? Uh, Give us some credentials. Uh, Conversion Bureau. What, no booze? Huh, I'm that's impressed. <laughs> well, that's Woo! a light crowd. <laughs> well, at least I'm not telling Trump. Oh, uh, wow. Trump. Conversion Bureau. Uh, Slice of life, uh, shipping fix, that's pretty much my forte. I meant titles, but okay. <laughs> what was that? Uh, I don't know what that was. I don't know, but the staff doesn't look that worried, so I'm guessing it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if I'm in a professional situation, the first thing you do is look for the guys who know what they're doing. They're not worried, we're good. Yeah. All right. Anyway, hi guys, I'm Pegasus Rescue Brigade. Uh, I've been with Equestria Daily for almost three years now, initially as a pre-reader, and then uh, for the last about year and nine months or so as one of the blog authors. Um, I've written several fanfics uh, that, uh, the only one that anybody really remembers is shipping and handling. <laughs> and. Uh, now, nowadays I run the uh, Writer's Training Grounds event that happens after the new episodes on uh, EQD and also do coverage at conventions like this and follow-ups after the episodes and things like that. <laughs> Hello, I'm Pascoite. I've been a pre-reader for Equestria Daily for a little over three years now. Uh, I write a lot of stories. I've got about 40-some on film fiction right now. Uh, the by far the most Shut read up. one is one that's very old and not very good, so I'm not going to mention his name. <laughs> uh, most of my stuff hire, hovers right on the edge of people recognizing titles. Uh, my favorite two would be In Bloom and If Memory Serves. Very good. Oh. Uh, I'm Alex Straza. I've been with Equestria Daily since like the very first call for pre-readers ever. But I've more or less retired from that, and now I'm a mod on film fiction. Um, as far as stories, my first one and probably most known one is the 63rd Rune. And more recently, well, if you consider like a year recent, <laughs> I've worked on uh, Iron or The Rise of Iron Mare. Oh, all right. I am a bag of Viking, and I'm probably one of the most uh, recent additions to Equestria Daily. I started doing the Equestria Daily editorials on Sunday, usually 2 p.m. every week. And then, um, as well as that, I have written fan fiction from time to time, such as uh, Dash's New Mom, Therapist Visit, and The Colbert Rapport. Uh, that it would be it. And I'm Cups. Uh, I was a pre reader back in the day, retired. Came back mostly to be the uh, the MLP CCG, the card game reporter, and, and let's point out the reason you left is because you went to work for Enterplay. Oh, yeah, <laughs> this, yeah this was not he got burned out. This was he got hired by Enterplay to make cards. This, he is, has this cards. is my credentials. Yeah. We'll now throw sure them at the crowd. We're lucky oh. to have him. And throw them at the crowd. Oh. Yeah, we'll hand them out at least. Yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll hand them out later. It's if you stay through the con and yeah. what, what are the credentials? Uh, oh, there's this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's for the little girl. Oh, here. Let the kids have them. Anyway. Yeah. All right, and as pseudo moderator, I did am you, uh, the masked ferret. I originally came on Equestria oh, Daily as a pre-reader, uh, and then I moved in the position of blog pony, and I mostly handle the pre-readers uh, and make sure that stories get answered in time and that every, nobody's feelings get excessively hurt and that everything makes sense. Um, she mostly just yells at us to do work. It works really, really well. Yes. Now I go and give you really sad puppy dogs. Yes. We, we do Pretty respond much. to threats of violence. Not to give you any ideas. No. Yeah, not, not <laughs> you, her. It's an in-house thing. If you threaten them outside of it, it's not going to work so hard. We'll die. We respond to threats from her. Yes. <laughs> I hold the special position with the motivational bat. Anyway, what do we want to talk about? Um, I think this is just a Q&A panel, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's basically a Q&A. So if people want to line up, there's a mic. Got a mic? 
figure that's probably easier. Come and uh, feel free to come up and ask questions. Uh, if any children have any questions, they could go to the front. All right. So uh, this, um, I know a lot of us here are related to the fanfic part of the fandom, but several of us are blog authors too, so this doesn't have to be limited to fan fiction questions or anything. And I know be. we don't have the really popular guys like Seth and Serial because they're all in Germany right now, but I promise we're just as entertaining. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we don't go on about Trixie as much, but we'll still put on a good show. <laughs> <laughs> right. About Trixie? Um, yes, my question was, if Trixie walked into your office, yes. what would you do? Ducking cover because Seth would come diving out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all we hear would be squee. But depends. You have to hit him on the right day of the week. Trick is not always his favorite pony. Not this always. Is true. true. Seth actually has yeah. a few that he oscillates through. Like Lyra was one of his favorites for a while. And now it's it still Velvet. is. Sweet Velvet, some yeah, it's OC just an bat, is an OC bat pony. He it's really likes. It's been Coco Pamel at times. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was um, Starlight Glimmer. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, he definitely had a thing. Yes, yeah, Seth keeps telling me to write editorials on all of his favorite. <laughs> Yeah. Ponies. I'm like, I don't have that much <laughs> material to work with. Much no. material and Seth's editorial would basically just be multiple pictures going, why don't you love her yet? Yeah. Just look and see whatever's the first thing he says when he logs on to Skype. Usually it's something like, Lyra! Yeah. 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 It's going to be one of those or, things. Oh my gosh, Starlight like, Glimmer is so amazing. And the rest of it's just face palm. My, my favorite is he calls me Vico Dongo. Yes. Vico Dingo. <laughs> like, your, your real name or your account name is never the He's name he addresses you yeah, by. No, he calls me Faraday. He, uh, he constantly misspells my name in like the most glorious ways. Yeah. Uh, you know, it'll be, he'll write Alex Straza and he'll use a G and a few Fs and a two H's. It's like he had a seizure and fell over. Yeah. And, uh, and then he pressed he enter the on the way down. Out. What other names? Oh yeah, Present Perfect is just El Presidente. Yes. <laughs> All I get is like cups or cups. Yeah. <laughs> to, to answer your question, though, I'd contact my therapist because that's signs of schizophrenia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your question. Thanks. Hey guys, what's your uh, favorite thing about working with EQD? It's got to be the people I've met. Like I love, Ditto. like I love everybody I work with. Is a lot of fun. Like Seth is insane at times, but he's a lot of fun to hang out with. And it's really cool getting to talk to people. Like especially when I was a blog pony, uh, as a pre-reader, sorry, I loved being able to tell someone, "Hey, your story's going up on the blog," because they would get so excited. And it was really, really cool to be able to sort of feel like I helped in some fashion. Like that, you know, I was able to help this story that I thought was really amazing get more exposure. Yeah, and from the pre-reading side also, it would be if there was a story that was almost good enough to make it and I could help the author and tell them, look, if you could just enhance this characterization a little bit or brush up the grammar a little bit and to have that dialogue back and forth with them, get that story fixed up and posted, and you then have a relationship you developed with that author. Mm -hmm. it, it's very nice meeting people that way. Yeah, develop a rapport. Mm -hmm. You're just scary, past. <laughs> I think your mic works now. You want to try it? Yeah, I'd say... Um, yep. One big perk of it also is being able to reach so many people mm -hmm. with, I mean, Equestria Daily has been the, the power. you know, the main <laughs> fan site in, uh, for, for getting pony news anyway, since almost the beginning of the fandom. I was going to say, like, and, at the uh, beginning of the fandom, I think it was us and Derpy Hoops News, and I yeah. think now there's kind of us, Derpy Hoops News, Discord's domain, and Horse News, too. But yeah. we all sort of focus on a different aspect of things, mm -hmm. so. Right. Especially Horse News. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Horse news is great fun, but if you're under 18, please don't go there. It's not safe for work. Um, but they are good. They are great fun, and we do love them. But yeah, it's really. I think it's exciting to be able to get this information and go. All I have to do is put this into a blog post, and I can send it to basically the whole fandom, mm -hmm. or you know, enough of the fandom that it will spread through the remaining means of communication through the people that do frequent Equestria Daily. And uh, it's a really cool privilege to be able to, to uh, be that unifying force for the fandom like that. Yeah, and it's so exciting, especially like when we're, you know, like when a new video comes out to get to talk to people about it or, I mean, even if it's, you know, helping like Bronies doing good or something, being able to say, hey, like they're doing something else, you know, everybody go help them out and such. And they get a flood. <laughs> yeah. Uh, similar to what Ferret said, I think it's really about meeting the different people that uh, work behind the madness. 
Like Seth in particular is one of the most unique people I've ever had the pleasure of interacting with. He is amazing. He yeah. will regularly come into the chat and make an announcement like, I washed my hair with conditioner yesterday and now it's all silky and shiny. That, and then just leave for that is That's our current <laughs> Skype chat title. Yeah, that's that yeah. exact line. Uh, and, another uh, one was, I wonder if you made bacon from soap if it would taste good. Yeah. Yeah, this, it's, it's this is what we deal with daily. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Our boss, everybody. Probably just having, because I'm part of the, I'm doing the editorials, and it's just really interesting to have a conversation going, because I like to, I like to have something that has not been done in the discussions yet, because I have been combing through the discussions, like, every, the past, like, six-ish months or something, and if it's not in a discussion, then it's pretty good as an editorial. Uh, just because you know you can have here's this here's this and let's let's see what happens and the comments and you know everything that comes out of it is just amazing. I, the, being able to in, like uh, being able to interact with so many people even indirectly. Um, the most recently, I, I was lucky enough to be able to be the person who did the follow up for amending fences. And just knowing that a bunch of people were like remembering the episode along with me as they read down it, it's there's to, to to be schmaltzy like you're changing the world by interacting with some thousands and tens of thousands of people, and it's a, it's like a magical feeling. Like I we've all had that stories we could go down the line and be like this is um, I I happen to be the person who said yes put my little dashi on Equestria Daily. I was the pre reader who approved it. <laughs> And I'll never forget that. Oh, boy. <laughs> and, yeah, it, people can complain about the writing, but it touched a lot of people. I was on a borderline. I'm like, ah, ah, people are going to love this. Forget it. Personal bias, people are going to love it. So being able to provide things to people and know that you're improving their lives just a little bit, a piece at a time or days at a time, whatever, is there's, it's, there's nothing really comparable, for me at least. Oh, uh, by the way, before I go, uh, Noble, I'm Bravery. I, nice to finally meet you. Oh, Bravery! Hey, <laughs> come, come find me after the panel. panel. You got it. So I was wondering, is uh, at these panels and conventions, is that the only time that you guys actually meet in person, or? Usually, yes. We yeah. 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 All over the world. Like, I'm up in Canada. A lot of these guys are, you know, in I'm in San Diego, yeah, country. so. Uh, yeah. Jersey. Yeah. I'm, I'm from Pennsylvania. I'm Vegas, in New York. From California. Yeah. I'm about two hours south of here. None of us are close to each other. Yeah, and I mean, mm -hmm. we have, you know, the couple of pre readers are, there's one in Australia, there's like Game Leon is out in um, Switzerland. The Netherlands. The Netherlands, yeah. sorry. Netherlands. So, yeah, unfortunately, cons like this are often sort of the only chance we all get to sort of hang out together. Some of us will, you know, do road trips or travel or something and we'll meet one or two of each other, but we don't, we never really get a chance to all of us get together. Yeah, so we, we don't really have the money to like. <laughs> EQD dinner in like the <laughs> middle of the country. <laughs> One day. Does often eat pizza while he's on Oh, Skype. God. Yeah, so I was going to say, Seth will get, sit in the Skype call and then eat pizza and complain about stuff. I just feel <laughs> like this pizza tastes really weird. It always comes back to Seth. <laughs> but, but for us, uh, these conventions are, you know, the fandom is fantastic. But yeah. for all of us to be able to actually see each other and go, hey, it's been a while. How you doing? Mm -hmm. Be able to That's put faces highlight. to those names. All right, thank you. Thanks very if, much. if we had an Equestria yearly convention, would you guys want to go? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, yeah. we got we No. no. <laughs> All right, you heard it here first. So much probably won't happen. So much money. Yeah. I wish. Go ahead, and drop the, uh, go ahead and drop the mic if you want. What's up? Uh, what's your favorite part about getting to work on EQD every day, knowing that there's so many people going on to work on it? Or read it. To read it or work on it? Like uh, so many go people going to read it? Yeah, how does that feel? Really, really intimidating sometimes. It really is kind of this feeling like that you're just, there's so much scrutiny, you know? Like if you make a typo or if you make a mistake <laughs> or say something wrong, you know, tons of people are going to see it. So sometimes it's, that was for me as a fairly new blog pony, I don't know if Vicodin had that or if anyone else remembers that, but I just remember I kind of, bit. you know, my first blog post, I was terrified, you know, oh my gosh, what if I screw it up? I'm going to do it wrong and everyone's going to hate me. <laughs> okay, so. That's why Seth's blog posts go through an editor. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a funny story. Who read the pandering editorial? Did anyone read that? Okay. Did anyone read it when it first came out? I remember that one. Okay. So basically what happened was I put a, I put a joke in there about pandering the throwing pandas uh, episode or joke. I basically uh, said it was more dead than Applejack's parents. <laughs> and yes, I remember. 
remember this. Oh, yeah. That didn't go over And well. yeah. uh, the, the comments were interesting. I really spurred a discussion <laughs> about sure, how mean I am. <laughs> you know, they were making up graphs and but, charts and everything. Yeah, well, it was like, I did that at like midnight, and I published it, and then like five minutes after, I was like, these editorials aren't meant for me to be funny. So I just immediately took the joke out and was, because there were a lot of people that were upset about that. And that is a low blow. Like, if anyone ever feels like writing stuff like that, uh, don't do that. He was, uh, but, he was properly chastised. Yes. I, because that, that's the other thing too, is just accepting constructive criticism. And, you know, there were other people that were angry at me for taking the joke down. And, you know, you can never please anyone, but that joke was not. Um, it was not a good taste, no, and try to be a little more that type <laughs> of response, I mean, to both the actual discussion that I had on pandering in MLP, whether it was good or bad, and then the discussion of, hey, that joke was kind of bad, it's like, that's, I like that. I love that type of response. Uh, this, okay, Seth decides sometimes to just like throw posts at me in the middle of the night because he's either busy with something and it, it's, it's nerve-wracking, all the same. And this actually happened to a poor Aquaman with that, what was it, the, the fake like season six announcement oh, right. that was misinterpreted. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so it is a very, um, it's, it yeah, it's yeah. nerve-wracking. Well, he threw me a post at 3 a.m. too, like before I was going to BronyCon. Seth I was like, dude. really strange hours that he sleeps. <laughs> Like, he'll sleep from, like, 9 in the morning until about 4 p.m., and then he'll be up all night. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then the rest we're, of us get to deal with lying, that. Because Seth doesn't actually sleep, but he pretends to sleep during those oh, times. it's because Seth doesn't exist. He's a, he's a metaphorical representation <laughs> of <laughs> po we're not pony sure incarnate. Anymore. <laughs> I, think, I think he's a box, actually. <laughs> oh, he's actually. here. He's everywhere. Yeah, he's, here he's hiding. Spirit. Seth is here in secret. All right. Oh, dear. Thank you very go. much. Uh, there we go. Yeah, sure. You can just pass it to the next person when you're done. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you throw one of these for my best friend, Haley? Yeah, we were going to, actually. There you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. We, good, dro good we dropped question. the ball. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Friendship is truly projectiles. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Magical projectiles. Yes. Uh, uh, hi. 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 Um, hi. I was wondering, at uh, Equestria Daily, do you guys ever collaborate with other um, pony-related news web blogs? Or, like, um, have you ever done that before? Have you ever, you know, meet, met up and collaborated? We've certainly met up before. I mean, we've, yeah. we've been hanging out with Horse News a bunch while we're at the con, but I'm not sure that we've ever done collaborative stuff. Do you guys know? Uh, 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 with uh, the other news sites? I don't yeah, know. have no. we ever done that? No, not, not that I know of. officially, I but we, do, we tend to uh, trade info back and forth. Yeah, well, yeah. certainly if somebody, you know, discovers like a leak for something, we'll try and pass it on to the other sites mm -hmm. so ah, everybody neat. gets it. And mm -hmm. we work, uh, even if not so much with the other news sites, there are definitely sites that benefit from us and we benefit from them, like the the uh, advent of fin fin fiction to uh, post all the fan fiction was extremely useful compared to uh, all the various different places that it was posted when we were receiving yeah. it in the early days of Equestria Daily. So we work very closely with fin fiction nowadays. Yeah. Um, and I mean, even, you know, fin fiction's owner, Nighty, is in the one of the EQD chats with us all the time. So uh, the, there's definitely several major websites where it's uh, useful to have that that partnership. Yeah, that back and forth. Yeah, it's very very. And I mean, handy. we do have a couple of sister sites. Like we have Beach City Bugle and Desu Daily, right. which are kind of sister sites. Uh, Beach City Bugle is for Steven Universe, and that's run by uh, Calpain. And then Woo. we have Desu Daily, which is sort of anime, and that's run by Alex Straza. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's clap. I don't know why. Yeah. Let's clap for Alex. Yes. Applause Such break. A good website. Stand-up comedian would be jelly. Absolutely. <laughs> Too thunderous applause. Yes, indeed. Thanks. Not yes, of course. Problem. Thanks for your question. What does it take to be a pre-reader on EQD? Um, <laughs> Pasco, I'm gonna let you feel um, that. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, um, here. In the early days, 
Our only requirement was that you already have three stories accepted for posting, but that wasn't a really good requirement because obviously being a good writer doesn't mean you're a good reviewer and being a pre-reader is all about reviewing. So when people apply to become a pre-reader, they send in samples of stuff they've reviewed, ideally a before and after maybe, or a G-Docs with the comments still in it so we can basically see you showing off what you know. If that's not available, then you know, we can come up with a few stories to send you and discuss with you and see what you have to say about them. And that's typically how we've done it in the past. Mm -hmm. And then once you're on staff, the requirements vary greatly. You know, some of us may do multiple stories in a day. Some of us may just chime in once a month or something <coughs> in a story. So the workload is variable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, mm -hmm. we do try really hard to make it a purely a work on what you're interested in. So I personally, I really don't like sort of dark stuff, sad or tragedy. So I really, I don't review that stuff because I'm gonna read a sad story and I'm not gonna like it even if it's a really good example. Um, alternatively, some of us don't really like comedy stories. So I'm more inclined to review comedy because I really like it. And so I find it's easier. It's basically, we try really hard to make sure that people are reviewing stuff they enjoy so that we can have a more sort of fair and biased review of it. Does that help? Yes, it does. Thank if you. If you want to be a pre-reader, your best bet is to um, email fanfiction at equestriadaily.com. You can find it on the fanfiction submission page and just title it, you know, interested in being a pre-reader or some such, and we can send you the info. Okay, and Thank if you. you don't have much experience doing reviewing and you're, you want to get into it, then there was a panel on that yesterday, and yeah. that will be available on YouTube to, to go watch and mm -hmm. tell you how to get into reviewing. And if not, you can feel free to come by Pools and Sofas. That's where a lot of the authors and uh, writers are hanging out. Are that's where a lot of people who make words better than I do. Right. All, <laughs> a lot of writers and authors and editors as well are hanging out in Quills and Sofas, which yeah. is like a room down that way. And you could just pop in and just get get some conversation yeah, started. Just, you know, come in, ask, say hi. Everybody's really friendly. You know, we're always happy to have more mm -hmm. people to chat with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. There's always more room in the pre-readers as well. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Yeah. <clears throat> hi. Um, okay. I wanted to ask, since, you know, the... Pony fandom is so diverse and varied, but in, com in conventions like that, that can be great, but online, behind the mask of anonymity, it can lead to a lot of arguments and struggles. I was gonna ask if any of you could relate any you know, challenges in terms that, that EQD has faced in terms of you know, moderation and how to keep the community a positive one uh, you know, when tumultuous events happen. <laughs> trying to work on fixing that because we really don't like how how it's gotten really unfriendly like we do try to keep it a fairly generally rated site we try to keep it fairly safe because we do have younger fans and we like them to be able to enjoy the site as well um, we do try and weed out the worst of the comments yeah mm -hmm. we do get the worst of the worst but there is still a lot we could do and it's mostly just trying to find time for it Calpin was usually the one who mostly handles that stuff and he's been really busy starting up Beach City Bugle and dealing with that. So it has, he's been having a hard time, but we are trying to work on it. I think the biggest problem we've had is actually, in my experience, has been with the pre-readers where we will send a response to someone and they won't appreciate it and they will just sort of, you know, reply with blistering invective of just, you know, you're an idiot, you don't know what you're talking about, blah, 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 and just kind of, I'm sorry you feel that way, <laughs> but you're submitting to me, which means need to be more polite. And if this is how you're going to respond, you're not the type of person we want to have on the site. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of thing. I don't know, how about you guys? Because I mostly know the career you're at. Yeah, I, I've noticed a lot of that myself. It's, uh, we get, you know, we'll send out a, res a standard form yeah. response and we'll get back, oh, you don't appreciate my talent. Uh, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're talking about. I have more, uh, you know, I can take this somewhere else. and. Our response is, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. getting posted on any TV is nice, but it shouldn't be, you know, the pinnacle of my success. It's, it's meant to showcase stories, yes, but there are plenty of other places, you know, Royal Guard, Royal Cantor Library, Tagalongs Library. There are plenty of places Fanfic. where you can find amazing stories. Equestria Daily should not be taken as... I got posted on EQD, and that means I'm better than everyone else. Mm -hmm. Right. And to, to go back to the toxicity and so far as you know, if we're thinking that the fandom is kind of that way. I mean, just ignore it. 
we were working on it, and at the same time, if you don't feed it, then it just, like... Because, like, again, going back to that terrible joke that I had, like, I had a significant amount of comments of people that were just very upset with that. And then they were gone the next week's editorial. Like, they were just... They didn't reply, they didn't go, are you going to apologize for that, which I already did. And they just, they were gone, you know. This, I mean, this fandom, I'm not going to say that it has a short attention span, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just saying that, like, if you do something bad, if you just say to yourself, oh, hey, I'll, I'll do better next time, and you do better next time, then everyone's going to be like, oh, okay, I forget. Yeah. <laughs> but we've been through a lot worse drama scenarios. Yeah, I'm not saying that my editorials, I'm just saying from my experience. Yeah. Um, my favorite one is actually, it's a really old fandom one, and it's Don't Feed the Paris Price. Yeah. And it's literally, you know, if somebody comes on the vlog or comes onto your page, and, you know, just, they're just being insulting and they're being rude and they're just trying to pick a fight, they, it is really, really hard to do, but your best answer is to just ignore them because they're usually just trying to get your attention, trying to get a rise of you. If it's on, like, if it's on EQD, tell one of us. If it's on somewhere like Film Fiction, you can tell the mods because that's not appropriate, but it is, as difficult as it is, your best bet is to just try and ignore them. Because yeah. they're, you know, in a lot of cases, it's they're really insecure, and the way they make themselves feel better is by tearing down other people. Precisely. Well, it's just easy to, it's easy yeah. to type and just send. Yeah, exactly. And going back to Film Fiction for a moment, the block button is your friend. Yes. <laughs> Very you much can, so. If people are harassing them, say you can block them and then Block and delete. Thank you. Okay. Not a problem. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, gang. Hey. Hey. What's up? Um, so, with Equestria Daily being as popular in the community as it is, being like the forefront of the community, if you will, <laughs> um, where do you guys try to find that balance when posting on Equestria Daily between, you know, having your own creative input and trying, you know, <coughs> to try and please everyone and not, you know, when you're walking on eggshells, try not to start anything. That, that's tricky. It, um, it depends on what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think a lot of it is sort of we have regularly, typically posts go out every hour, and we'll do some half hour if it's something small. Like So for really big news, we try and post it right away. Um, but we still try to make sure there's a lot of slots. Water. Um, Water break. Don't, don't electrocute us. No. <laughs> We try to make sure there's still space for us to do our own things. You know, we can do really silly posts at 3 a.m. Which we do. You know, the comic posts, we'll post something really goofy in the header or we'll draw friends. And so I'm not sure. Like, that's been my experience. I keep the balance on my fingers. Well, one thing that we run into that <coughs> is fortunately not super common but is tricky when it happens is that occasionally something will get leaked or whatever that then we sometimes even get into an argument about whether or not it should be posted because we're such a big site that we're, you know, under the eye of Hasbro and whatever, and we're not d directly working for them or anything, but we'd rather stay on their good side. Mm -hmm. They're aware so. we exist, and they're just kind of, you're not actively threatening us, so we'll leave you alone, but we do still try to, you know, um, I think we got <coughs> from the leaked PlayStation emails, there was a leaked email from one of the film production companies that was talking about the upcoming My Little Pony movie and mentioned one or two things. And there was a lot of discussion between us about whether we should post it or not. And, you know, um, we ultimately decided it was too risky because it was someone's private information. We didn't feel right. But we also felt that it was really unethical to do it and that it could potentially get us in a lot of trouble with Hasbro. And, Ultimately, we want to be able to keep doing this, you know, we want to be able to keep talking to people and meeting people and having fun And if we get, you know, cease and desisted for something, we can't do that anymore mm -hmm. So that particular thing circulated on 4chan and probably made its way to some of the smaller news sites yeah, some of the other news Because sites that they don't, you know, have that same level of, of the stakes of whether or not they post it to be concerned about So we have to, have you know, find that balance between giving the fandom all the latest news and posting things that are okay to post um, that we have to pay closer attention to than a lot of the less viewed areas of the... Because yeah, uh, we're just, we're such a big mm -hmm. deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Trying not to be, trying not to put it that way, no, but... I too big to fail. 
Yeah. <laughs> Before long, Hasbro will be asking us if it's okay to post stuff. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> exactly. We get to the point when Hasbro's going, hey, guys, do you mind? Yeah, there's an executive comes down to my house, and he knocks on the door, and he gives me lunch, and he says, can, can you post this? And I say, no. <laughs> Sorry, man, you're going to have to do better than, you know, a cheap lunch. And lunch I need and dinner. <laughs> and then yes. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, as long as Seth isn't running uh, Hasbro, I think he'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much. It, it, it might work. Hello. Hey, okay. Hello. Hi. Nice shirt. Thank you. Uh, all I want to say is thank you for what you guys do. Woo! You're welcome. You're welcome. what we do. Yeah. It's because it's we have fans and we have publishers yeah. and followers that we get to do this stuff. So. We enjoy seeing you guys. And just on a quick side note, your drawing stuffs is a great way for me to end my night. Yeah, so, the thank you. are really cool. You always like to have that one thing that everyone likes to, you know, come home to. Yeah, I was going to say. Exactly. Yeah, that's okay. why we're so diverse. So, um, what's the most disturbing story you've been sent for approval, like as pre-readers? Okay. Uh, I don't know, Hitler Jack is pretty close. I would say Sweet Apple Master was There's plenty of things that have not been posted. I know, but it's like that would be the most, that'd be the most wow thing for me was just... I can't believe the fandom made this. Um, I remember well, when it went up and just I don't know, Hitler well, Jack is pretty close. Uh, yeah, there people, are people who have been who, pre-readers for longer, what have you yeah. guys? Well, there are people who just don't read the submission guidelines or who, I don't know, maybe think that we'll make an exception for them or something and yeah. submit stuff that's just way too violent. We've, way got, too yeah. we've gotten yeah. Nazi uh, fix. We've mm -hmm. gotten yeah, uh, stuff that's really aggressively sexual or mm -hmm. like we have you know minimum word counts for stuff. And we do occasionally bend those, but we try hard not to. But if we think something's really exceptional, we will. But we'll have people, somebody will you know submit a story that's only 500 words. And we'll respond, well, I'm sorry, but it needs to be longer than that. And they'll kind of respond, well, why can't you make the exception for me? Because it's 500 words. <laughs> yeah, because mm -hmm. unfortunately that's not how it works. Yeah. Okay, I thank mean, you. Thanks very much. Yeah, we even have to hold each other to the guidelines yeah. as well. Oh, yes. Because I, I write yeah. a lot of stuff in my spare time and I always yeah. send it to them and I have Six. to wait just as long as everyone else. We're yeah. harder mm -hmm. on each other than anything else. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, I think as pre readers, we tend to be a lot more critical of each mm -hmm. other just because we know, you know, we know we're capable of very good writing and so it really is the kind of, mm -hmm. okay, this has to be really amazing. Right. Yeah. Um, Rather than just, oh, it's a pre reader and it automatically goes up. Um, as, a, as an FAM fic, Reader slash upcoming writer, um, I'd say that you did a lot of effort into, into the site. You put, put up the comics, make sure the stories get, make sure the stories get that model, it gets toned in depending on how good, like make them appropriate. And, I'm, and I have to say that you really, really did put a lot of effort into them. It's gotten um, a lot The only question yeah. I have yeah. for you guys is when you, when you decide to post a Story on your daily, what, what do you look for? It needs to be pretty good across the board. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be perfect in everything, but right. I mean, we are going to look at, does it have good mechanics, the grammar, the spelling? Are they good enough? Um, are the characters well developed? Are they behaving in reasonable ways? Does the plot make sense? There are no holes in it. It, it all makes logical sense. So pretty much any aspect a reviewer we look at for a story, we want it to be pretty good across the board. Yeah. Uh, you know, make sure, like, is this a unique plot that they're doing? Or if it is, you know, just kind of a rehash plot, is it a really good version of that plot? Right. Because Characterization. Uh, yeah. I didn't say but, uh, Of course, there's the, this is a myth that we will, like, reject a story for a single grammatical error or something. Oh, Sometimes mm -hmm. people accuse oh. us of being such, you know, intense grammar Nazis about it that we're just going to send something away because you use the wrong form of the word there or something, you know? Mm -hmm. No. I, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, it's just that a couple of guys out, at, I saw at the end of the a really grammatical, grammar error story. I don't know whether a bar way to allow it to go through either because it was so bad at helping or just because it was just, did that as a joke? No, Ben. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Um, does this, thing, does this include the comic book comics? Um, the comics we're usually a bit more relaxed on. Those are usually mm -hmm. sort of collected on, you know, they seem like they'll be funny, they seem like people enjoy them. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we have the, the long-running serials that we post. 
Yeah, those don't get pre-read. Those are, because um, I know a lot of the times you're probably talking about the comics that are in fairly broken English that mm -hmm. do occasionally get posted. And that's yeah. more because the, I guess, Seth's view on it is that the the comics are more art than fan fiction. Yeah. Right. So, yes. And if it, if you can tell what's going on in them and the art is okay, then they usually get posted, okay. even if the yeah. the grammar's not good. That makes sense. I'm thinking very much. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Thanks very much. It's interesting. I think a couple of uh, good <laughs> comics that have been posted on on EQD, uh, in a lot of those broken English ones are that way because they're written by people who speak English as a second or third or fifth language. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those good comics, uh, you'll see like, you'll go back and look at them like a month later, and suddenly they have a translator now. They have a person who's helping them because they got a little exposure because their art was deserving and their storyline was deserving even if it was a little hard to follow. Yeah. So, you know. Uh oh. Daring Duo. ask for another pack of cards. <laughs> Two packs of cards? It's a daring Duo. Um, who are your favorite ponies? Uh, Good, there question. We go. Go down Good the question. Line. Yeah, we'll start with Opal. Are we living this just to main ponies or princesses? Whatever. Any pony. Any, Luna. Any pony in the show. Luna. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> she likes Luna. Uh, well, let's see. I'm wearing a hat with a picture and 11 buttons of Derpy on it, so I'll let you guys decide <laughs> <laughs> who you think my favorite pony is. Uh, PRB, is, her name is Muffins now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 <laughs> I know, I'm just... Oh, really? Yeah, tough call for me. Backgrounds, uh, I love Derpy and Octavia. Main characters, I love Rarity and Applejack. I have to say, for main characters, my favorite is always Pinkie Pie, because I can really relate to her, because I tend to be very enthusiastic and bouncy. And I'm not quite, you know, I can't warp reality like she does, and I'm definitely not as energetic, but yeah, I really, really love Pinkie Pie. Fairy, give me some. We're trying to yeah. uh, feed her enough <gasps> copy. Uh, Princess Cadence, full stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pinkie Pie and Diamond Tiara. Just because they're so alike, right? Yeah, I yes. <laughs> such a little rich girl. I step on people in order to achieve my dreams, just like her. <laughs> <laughs> and as much as Seth likes to go on about Trixie, that's Vic talking about Diamond Tiara. Yeah, Diamond Tiara. Tiara. <laughs> She's just. Like, come on and go, oh, Diamond Tiara is so amazing. I mean, she's such a bully, but she's so. Yeah, I mean. Okay, Vic. <laughs> uh, Pinky, this uh, yeah. distill smile song down to like, it, it's the meaning of her life is to literally make other people's lives better and happier in her own way. And how can you not at least like her? Okay, Anyone so. Anyone who can't stand her, you can. I'll, bye. <laughs> All right, so in Magical Mystery Cure, Ponyville fell apart without Pinky because they Pinky. were not smiling. So. Yeah. Pinky is objectively best pony because <laughs> Ponyville <laughs> fell apart without her. Objectively. <laughs> Ooh, we have Discuss. Discuss. Oh, Discuss. Hey, hey, no there's, there's your editorial, Vex. That's, that's my next one. <laughs> Pinkie Pie is Thank, best pony. Thank you for yes. your question. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, hey, Haley, hey. but Luna is best pony. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I have to admit, Luna is really cool. I really like, but like my the favorite princess. Episode. That was, that was yeah. a fantastic episode. Did you have a question for us, too? Yeah. Okay. Um, how many of you guys have been watching My Little Pony ever since episode one, just like me? I've been nice. watching since G1. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm original. Oh. You got anyone else in True. here who remembers old school ponies? Hey, there we go. All we got right. a few. We got a few old fans. Um... I haven't been watching since episode one. The first episode I saw live was Apple Book season, actually. How about you guys? So that's pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Three episodes in. Yeah. I started in the hiatus between seasons one and two, so I binge watched season one on YouTube and then <laughs> caught, caught season two as it was coming out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I arrived right at the end of uh, season one, like uh, about when the finale was airing. So it's been a while. I'm uh, not quite as new as some of you, but uh, I came in during uh, when Sonic Rainboom was new. I came in around the time of Luna Eclipse, so I am a huge casual. <laughs> she, oh, no, go ahead. She, 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 she yelled at me 
for like 20 minutes in that episode, and I was like, I can get into this. And then you got into Diamond Tiara. I see. Yes, and then Diamond Tiara yelled at me too, and I was like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> like evil villain characters, what can I say? Uh, Winter Wrap Up had just come out when I found out about it. Though I did watch a little bit of G1 back in the day and skipped a few generations, thankfully. Yeah. So you got us all beat in terms of how yeah. got into it. Congrats. I'm just really, Congrats. I'm just nice. really old. <laughs> Here, you want to be on EQD? Here, take my seat. No, don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 don't. Sorry. Oh, yeah, there's two. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you for your Thank question. You. Enjoy your cards. So, <laughs> before an editorial or a blog post gets posted to the site, what kind of editing or review process do you guys go through? If Seth writes a mandatory editorial <laughs> review. <laughs> Let's Mandatory spell check at the very least. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I, I always run my editorials by Seth before they get posted. And uh, for better or for worse, I mean, because Seth will send me a mess. Like, I'll wake up at, editorials are supposed to be up by 2. And I'll get a message at, like, 154 of him saying, oh, yeah, you could post that. I'm like, I have, okay. I'm, <laughs> and then... Also, at the same time, he, like, every idea that I've had so far, he's been like, okay, good, do it. And then I have that Applejack joke, and I'm like, Seth, why didn't you read that at least? Usually, uh, what happens is somebody will write a blog post, and then we'll sort of, we'll look it over yeah. ourselves, and then we'll sort of show the other bloggers, mm -hmm. and sort of say, okay, can someone else, you know, put some more eyes on this? Yeah, yeah we'll yeah. just dump it in A few of us will yeah. look it over and go, okay. Uh, There's always at least one up. other pair of eyes that looks at it. I do not know. Um, okay. It it uh, varies a little bit based on the type of post, too. Like, if it's a really quick piece of news or something that's posted every day, it doesn't usually get checked over because it's something that we're so used to making again and again. But if it's something that we put a lot of effort into or something that we don't usually do, like uh, the episode follow-ups, those we share with the rest of the blog authors before they get posted mm -hmm. um, to, you know, analyze just look at it for general uh, grammar stuff and for, like, what do you think the jokes are like? Because we, we spend a lot of try time trying to make those relatively funny. And so, oftentimes it's, know. can you think of a better joke because I can't think of anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. Uh, I've gotten many, uh, many of that. Can you think of a better joke? I'm like, no. 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 <laughs> Those are the best you can do. Hello, Thanks. I'm back again. Um, I have another question. Okay. What's up? Um, about commenting. <laughs> okay. this will be good. I actually do some commenting. I'm, I'm the occasional cyber pegasus <laughs> forms. But um, I was wondering, what was the best comment you've ever read on EQD? Every one by Kyo Kusanagi. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Kyo. <laughs> Especially yes. the deleted ones. <laughs> Especially every time there's something comes up involving Gilda. Oh, yeah. Of course, he's obsessed with Gilda. Super trampoline can often be really, really funny because he'll have arguments with himself. <laughs> like he'll make a comment and then he'll reply the comment arguing it, and then he'll reply that comment arguing it. My favorites have to be just, you know, when someone says thanks. Like when someone says, oh my gosh, Ferret posted, and that's really cool, and it's just kind of, oh, they like me, yay. <laughs> my favorite comment was several years ago, before I was working for EQD in any capacity, wasn't even a pre reader yet, um, when I was regularly commenting on the blog, like a lot of you guys. And one time, I left a comment on something. It was just a normal post. I left a normal comment, and then I get a response from Serial Velocity, one of our oldest blog authors, uh, re replying and saying, dude, I just got to tell you, you are like my favorite username on this entire website. <laughs> <laughs> so. Then when I met them at BronyCon in 2012, like he and Calpain and PK were all excited, like, look, it's Pegasus Rescue Brigade. He so, dragged you over to Seth, yeah. going, look, Seth, this is the guy with the cool username. Mm -hmm. And Seth looked up <laughs> from his phone for about a second and a half to say hello, and then returned to it. <laughs> so. Seth tends to be kind of shy in person, so he really is just, you know, hide on the phone. He's always we have on to, phone. We that have to hide his cell phone. Yeah. One, because he's shy, and two, because he's literally always working on the blog, even while at conventions. Yeah, so. he's, he's posting stuff on his phone, like, all the time. Yeah. How about you, Pasco? I have long since learned not to venture into comment sections. <laughs> <laughs> Smart man. How about you, Alec? 
Uh, at first, I didn't know the answer, and I was thinking really hard about it. And then I decided it was a comment on like the old commenting system before intense debate came and ate everything. And it was a comment from Poltron. And if you're familiar with him, you know he has like a certain way with things. Or, you know, not, not very positive, usually. Poltron can be very cynical and abrasive. He abrasive, yes. Abrasive is what I was thinking. Well, he used to, but the comment was like, wow, Seth, thanks so much for making this site. I'm so glad it's here. And it was like such a 180 to what I'm used to. I love it. <laughs> Who are you? What did you do with Poltron? Are you sure he wasn't being sarcastic? No. That was like on old, super old EQD. That was Ernest. Back, back before he worked on film fiction, it became cynical. <laughs> Oh, uh, I can't think of any, but usually the ones that just go like, oh, hey, this editorial was really insightful, and I like the <laughs> spin you put on it. It's like, okay, good enough. That means my words were not wasted. And your time. Yeah. Whenever we, uh, whenever we post, we get that <coughs> cool little blue thing, which means we get to steal the limelight and get all the thumbs up automatically, which is great. <laughs> and uh, anyone who takes the time to re like reply to those in like a non-jerky manner, just be like, if we post something and you reply and have a little mini conversation, it's fine. Like, mm -hmm. don't, don't hesitate to, like, it's cool. We're here, we know, we're not, we're, we, we're, we're elected to serve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, expanding on what Cups just said about that, I have actually done an experiment with that where I've left like the most boring comment that I possibly <laughs> could, but because I'm a mod and my comment bar on the site comes up as blue instead of white, you just get all the thumbs up. It's like, it doesn't matter what you say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh, a blog, a blog quote yeah. commented, quick, thumb it up. But, yeah, but much. don't stop. Don't stop doing that. I need no, the I need ego. ego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much for your comment. Thank you. Um, I actually have two questions. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm a, I regularly um, am, uh, <laughs> it's all good. It's okay. You want to really? want to think about it and pass it to him, or oh, you, no, I, you good? Okay. okay. Uh, I'm a regular comic artist on Equity, and it's usually regulated by Calpain or Seth mm -hmm. for the comics. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking of going into animation, and I'm wondering. Uh, the first question is, if I make an animation, will it go to through all of you, or will it go, just go to like Seth or Calpain, and yeah. then you'll see it later, you'll and then you're like, oh, it goes to Seth what's this? <laughs> Goes straight to Seth, it goes to Seth, but sometimes he will get on Skype then and, and go, hey guys, and look. say, hey, what do you guys think of this? Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it starts with Seth. Yeah, generally speaking, um, stories are the only thing that's really like reviewed mm -hmm. and moderated. Everything else is kind of, hey, new stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes Seth himself will do the reviewing, but he won't give it to a group of people. Right. Like we get more art submitted than actually goes oh, into the draw frames. I'm sure so that yeah, so Seth he picks out. Sort of go, hey guys, which picture should I put up? This one or this one? And we kind yeah. of yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It should be noted that animations probably have the lowest standard for anything that we post because, because we so few people can make them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so There's we don't so get a lot of animations. So yeah. if, if you really want to get posted on the blog, do animations. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> chances are we'll Even put it up. Even do like storyboarding or like rough animation, it will usually get posted. Yeah, learn SFM, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, SFM is really popular. Uh, and the last question is, what's which animation this year shocked you the most or surprised you the most? <coughs> what are you trying to say? I want to see the animatic for, uh... Uh, we talking like the show or fan-made? Um, <coughs> it could be like a trailer for the show or fan-made. Uh, we're going with like official show stuff. It had to be the animatic from SDCC, which yeah. we're not going to explain because spoilers and some people don't want those, mm -hmm. but I was... Mm -hmm. I was not expecting that, and I really that was, was just kind of, what? <laughs> I, I think we can say that it had a song. Yes. Uh, yes. I actually avoided the trailer from San Diego Comic Con, so I don't want to know. Yes. I'm I'm not not say, no spoilers. We're You'll not, enjoy we're it. Spoiler yeah. Stuff for people. It was really good. Um, for fan stuff, my favorite fan one has to be it's um, it's the song. Um, Hello, my honey. It's if you've ever watched the old Looney Tunes, it's the Dancing uh, Frog. Yes. You know, Michigan, 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 Michigan J. Frog. Frog. Yeah, Michigan J. Frog, and it's Derpy and the Doctor, and it's just a very simple, rough animation. And it's you know, Derpy picks up the phone, and it's the Doctor singing to her, <coughs> and I just love the really cute style of it. Like they picked a very early rendition of the song, so I love just 
how emotional it feels, because the song is a really loose explanation. The song is basically this guy going, hey girl, I know I've been gone for a while, but you still love me, right? And she's going, no I don't, you're a jerk. Like, you desert me and I saw you with another woman and no, I can't stand you. And him going, I'm sorry, I really missed you, but I mean, I really do care about you here going, okay, I guess I forgive you. And then going, yay, we love each other. And then he leaves again. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it's sort of like this traveling like guy going home to visit his girlfriend and she's you know really mad at first and then forgives him and then he leaves. But it's really, really cute. I think you can just look up, you know, Derpy Doctor, um, Hello My Darling. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can probably find it, which it's I recommend. It's not from the past year, but Children of the yeah. Night, when that came out, yes. oh, I was yeah. really impressed with all of that just yeah. because, and I might... Yeah. New editorial idea. I'm hoping they yeah. do something else because... Uh -huh. It's just that good. Yeah. Well, what about you guys? This this was another one that I wasn't sure until I really thought about, and I decided um, friendship is manly too. Oh, <laughs> oh, God, yes. yes. Oh, I love Kanashi Panda. Oh. Mm -hmm. Every every all of his animations are great. Yes, but yeah. especially friendship is manly too. I'd forgotten that one. I, I can't. Oh. I changed my answer. <laughs> friendship is manly too. Honestly, uh, no. if we're talking about Kanashi, uh, I, I would have to go with uh, the. Care a lot wedding attacks that they, they did. Well, I think just animatics you yeah. animatics you really like. Like, don't limit yourself to just one person. No, but he is pretty good. <laughs> well, we were trying for this year as well. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, still the animatic. You, oh, I don't have time to watch animations. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're too busy. Well, you've got a kid to chase around. So that's right. yeah. You have a day job. <laughs> yeah, and I a day job lots and, and lots of fan fiction. Oh yes. Have have her watch animations for you and then. Have her re yeah. repeat what it is. She could be like, "Is it good? It had a pony. It's good." <laughs> well, I'm, I'm assuming that as soon as we see Anthology Five tonight, we're gonna have a new decision. So yeah, yeah. I'll hold off. So I have to pimp. A friend of mine is doing the crossovers panel at the same time, and you should check it out because it's really good. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, the way the schedule worked out is that Anthology is running against a couple panels. So. Mm -hmm. Aww. The cross I know asking a lot, but like Anthology will be on YouTube shortly, and the crossover panel will be on YouTube for months. <laughs> yeah, hint, and hint. we're up against the rolling panel, hint. so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for that, and yeah. um, Pinkie Pie is best pony. Mm -hmm. yeah! Thank oh, you. Aw, oh, traitor. <laughs> thanks very much. Right. And nice shirt. Name's Yunova here, and here's my question. Um, based on like uh, some of your early morning or like uh, night posts that um, have to do with like a certain thing, like say like um, um, like if would you still watch the show if you have uh, if you had all of these ponies either transform or be something else? Like those posts, um, they kind of um, it kind of feels awkward to me in like a particular way, like uh, like a. Uh, for me, it's like you're trying to give off like a positive vibe, but it's kind of like forcing down something. And I wanted to know, like, uh, when did those posts start? Um, have any ideas for like either like improving like um, the quality of like uh, your um, those um, posts that uh, bring up like ideas for like uh, the forums to discuss? Um, those are often sort of the discussion posts, I believe, you're what you're referring to, because we do the early morning and the late night discussions but those are purely just meant there a space for people to talk and chat about whatever. We don't sort of say, here's a topic, discuss it. Uh, the discussion post specifically, the ones we go, here's an idea, what do you guys think? Um, mm -hmm. I think it's, isn't it mostly Seth that does those? Yeah. 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 Because so Seth is up. Sort of pull us for ideas. So yeah, if you mm -hmm. see anything weird in those, that's yeah, that's Seth. Seth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I mean, those are, are um, you know, just a place for people to like he's he's giving them a, a topic so they can share their creative ideas. It's yeah. sort of the same as the writers' training grounds thing that I write, where I provide a couple prompts based on the episode for people to write um, short fanfics on. Yeah. You know, it's it's just a suggestion of like, what if this happened? We're not trying to to actually force that idea as something that we want the fandom to accept or the show to do or anything. Not at all. Right. We're just trying to spark discussion. Yeah. Now the 3 a.m. posts are another matter entirely. Mm -hmm. Now the 3 a.m. posts are another matter entirely. Yeah, the 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. posts are just us being Here's silly. You know, it's something we really like, but yeah. we don't necessarily have time during the day because the slots do fill up really, really fast with stuff, and it's just kind of, it's something ridiculous that we want people to laugh about. It's why we have the have the tag, ha ha, I'm having fun and you can't stop me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that hopefully answer your question? 
Well, um, I believe it does, and um, um, yeah, I, I totally understand where you guys are coming from for those posts, so thank you for giving me this new perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No problem, glad we could help. Thanks Next. for your question. Thank you. Is that the smooth? It's the smooth. It, it, it is. Bow, nice. bow, 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 bow. Where is your hood, sir? We're going with this character, I picked the smooth. <laughs> Uh, there is more to this Moose cosplay you have yet to see. It doesn't matter. Right? <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, I'm Jared. This is Andrew. We are admins from the Bernies of Southern Pennsylvania. Yep. Um, right. Shout out for Pennsylvania. Yeah. Woo! Oh, yeah. got a few. Um, hey, I'm from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. <laughs> yes. Um, did you say bugbear? Um, so, one thing that we really loved was when the uh, 100th episode was approaching and there was the list of locations you could see it. Um, it definitely spiked our member count with yeah. a lot of That's awesome great. new people. Just people coming out of the woodwork going, we didn't know this giant brony group was there because cool. all our regulars just like, it's like a family party. And they're like, what? This was here the entire time? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, were you thinking about like hopefully doing more of those in the future for like more milestone episodes or like movies or... Certainly. Like maybe even friendship games, yeah. wink, wink, nudge, Well, nudge. <laughs> I, I think if it happened once on DQD, it can happen again. Yeah, yeah. Well, certainly we like doing that. We've also got, I mean, in the cyber, we have the meetup map um, that we do try to direct people to, that we try to, you know, have people um, submit to the map what events are going on so that they can get more exposure and notice. Yeah. Um, and definitely we've often got in the nightly roundup, we try and sort of, if anyone's doing like a, an immediate event, we try and make sure, yeah, so if you run a group, and you're doing an upcoming event, say like in a couple of weeks, you can email it to submit at equestriodaily.com and it will go into the nightly roundup and you can get some more attention and eyeballs on it. Yep. Any chance of, oh, you're gonna ask you the same to, thing. Yeah, I've already been pestered you guys about this. I'm sorry, when are we gonna get the 100th meetup sort of roundup post? I didn't know that it one was going to say. It's coming? I'm I'll, not. I'll ask Seth. That yeah, we'll ask, ask Seth. Yeah. This is, this is a Seth I question. Think we, I think yeah. we said everything in the day after. And we were Seth like, probably waiting. has it lurking yeah, somewhere. It's a nice fantasy. Okay. Yeah, we will go and talk to Seth and <laughs> figure that, out who was supposed to do that. Yeah, that and must be something that he was he had planned and then never did, and the rest of us never even knew about it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I just have Thank you, guys. See you later, guys. Round three. Hooray! Um, can kids work on Equestria Daily? <laughs> I don't um, think we can have kids work on Equestria Daily because if you're under 18, the government gets really, really angry. Yeah, <laughs> and, and we don't really suspicious. Um, because they're worried that we might take advantage of you. Yeah, Child you can labor. send stuff. Yeah, there's yeah, laws in place. You can place. send stuff. That's how yeah. you can work. Yeah. How about this? Art? If you draw pictures or anything, you can absolutely send them to us, and we'll yes. happily post them up. Yes, Yay. we'd love art, to do that. Writing, you know, we'll do it. So yeah. there's a giant clockwork mechanism that makes the page work, and if any of the small gears way at the bottom break, we'll come and call them for you to, to fix it, okay? Yeah, yes. we'll set up a wheel for you, and you can run in the wheel for us. Oh, by the way, this is why there are child labor laws. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you for your question. Ooh, final question. Hello. But oh, thank you for offering. Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. I like, cut the hat. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Seriously, like... <laughs> I, I am super lazy. Yeah. A lot of people on the blog aren't super lazy. So no, there's a no, lot of hard work that goes into doing it. So no, like that yeah. kind of spirit. If yeah. you want to work, if you want, if you want to do something, you probably can do it. You just, yeah. just do you, it. You can do just no. your do version no. of it. <laughs> if you have the drive, then yeah. go for it. Like I didn't, like I started writing when I was 13 and then I just stopped for no reason. But if you... If you start writing or drawing or whatever it is that you want to do right now, you're going to be a Lauren Faust or a Megan McCarthy or yeah. whatever you want to call it really soon. You just have to have the drive. You just have to have the drive and you know, keep working at it and just keep improving. So, I wanted to ask, what is the weirdest thing that's happened to you guys during the class three days? Your Maybe hair. Seth. 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 It's all Seth? Seth is, uh, let's, let's spend the last couple minutes thinking of more weird stories about Seth. Yeah. He seems to like that. Well, I don't know if the staffer had a question or he's just telling us to hurry up. Oh. We have two minutes. Oh, okay, terrific. Uh, honestly, okay. running into some of these guys for the first time was pretty surprising. Yeah. You mean yeah, Aqua? It was, yeah, it was yeah. really surprising, you know, that you see these names in Skype and then you meet them and you go, oh my God, he really is a rugby player. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Aquaman looks like he could throw all of us in the dumpster at the same time. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, <laughs> it probably he would. He has done that a couple of occasions. Well, yeah. <laughs> twice, but I mean, it was only good fun. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Seth is just so goofy. Yeah, Seth is a character. Yeah, my, really my, classic, my classic funny Seth story is uh, at Unicon way back when. The con that must not be named. Yeah, the oh, con yes. that must not, not be named. He, he was in the Voldemort. same hotel room, and the hotel room was kind of fancy. It had two floors, and he was going upstairs. He tripped on the stairs, and all he could say was, Oh, my God, stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I remember he was supposed to do a post in like 10 minutes or something, and he, no, it was like in an hour, and he threw an airplane around the room, a paper airplane, for 50 minutes, and then sat down and did the post when there was like five minutes to spare. And it was like a draw friend too, so he had to put like 50 pictures in there, and that takes 10 million years, but he still is like throwing it a paper airplane. He's like, yeah, that's how I get stuff done. I'm like, that makes so much sense. <laughs> This explains so much. One of my favorite much. stories has to be actually with uh, Game Leon when they were, like, right now while they're out in Germany. And I guess they were driving. And they were sure driving down the road. It was fairly straight. And Seth suddenly goes, burritos! <laughs> and poor Leon is so shocked he almost pulls the car off the road and goes, what the heck was that? And Seth goes, I don't know. I just like burritos. <laughs> <laughs> but just nearly gave him a heart attack. Taco Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, Seth, Seth likes to burst into the Skype chat, say something entirely unrelated to the conversation, and then leave immediately. Yeah, for hours. Like he won't even come and have a conversation. He'll just show up, say something, and then just wander away. He'll yeah. say something about his day. He'll say something about a game he was playing. He'll say something entirely unrelated to everything ever. Like, we could, be, <laughs> we could be sitting, you know, having, like, a discussion about a story that we're not sure about posting, and Seth will just come in and... Usually like, he'll go say, like, Lyra or something. Yeah, he'll just go, Lyra. He doesn't even like Lyra that much. Why is Lyra. he, like... Lyra. Well, he keeps quoting ponies that with hats. That kills people. Oh. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, or like he'll come in and be like, I really want pizza. I'm going to go eat taco. Pizza. And the, then the, like, yeah. the one that sticks with me is that he said he woke up from a dream where ponies walked around with donuts threaded over their tails, and he just wanted to see that happen on the show so bad. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, so like you just have ponies just walking around. Normally they just have donuts on their tails. And he couldn't decide like if that meant like they were selling the donuts or if it was a fashion statement or like if they'd eat the donuts. It was just they had donuts on their tails and that was the important thing. I don't think we ever determined if he was like sleep typing or something at that point. I would honestly believe that Seth is fully capable of typing in his sleep and having a conversation. Oh man, then there was that time that he got stung by a scorpion. Oh my oh, god. Seth, <laughs> scorpions. Seth lives in Arizona, so scorpions are a normal thing around there. And you man, know, you have to shake out your shoes. He, he got in bed sheets and even weirder by a pretty <laughs> decent margin for the rest of that day. Yeah. Yeah, that we're stuff over. must have been messing with him. Right. We're, 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 we're over. We're so over on time. Okay. Let's Thank wrap you it up. for coming, guys. Thanks, You're Thank all you so awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you.